About once a month, we're joined on air by the governor of Idaho, uh, C.L. Butch Otter, and we spend a few minutes with him, and we get a rundown of some things going on around the state and some issues, uh, a couple of issues we'd like to address and also a couple of things that he sometimes uh, needs to address as well just to keep the public better informed. Today being one of those days, it's 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, 49. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And uh, first of all, Governor, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Bill. I'm proud to be with you. So a little birdie in the Republican Party told me on Monday uh, that uh, that the lieutenant governor of Ohio is coming to the state to do a, 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 a well, there's going to be a, a barbecue or something at your home, and uh, raising speculation that you may be ready to endorse her boss uh, in, in the race for president. Well, listen, I got a lot of admiration for John Kasich, uh, the governor of Ohio and former congressman from Ohio. You got to remember, he was, uh, he was the only one that ever presided over a balanced budget in Congress. And that was in the mid nineties during the Clinton administration, not only a balanced budget, but we started paying down some debt. And so I'm, I'm impressed with his management capability financially, uh, but he's done a great job in Ohio. His initial race, uh, uh, when he first uh, became governor of Idaho, was pretty close in his last race. I don't know. He won by 30 or 40 percentage points. But he's done a great job in Ohio. But I have not endorsed, uh, nor will I endorse probably until after the Lincoln Day circuit, because my pitch has been that the next president ought to have been a Republican governor or is a Republican governor. And so uh, Kasich uh, is uh, certainly one of the brightest stars in our 31 Republican governors that we have, but we have some others. And uh, I think everybody that's in the race uh, is, I mean, everybody that's going to get in the race, uh, I hope, is in the race now. In fact, uh, I see we're starting to uh, reduce those numbers a little bit, and I think that's right. But Mary Taylor did come out, the lieutenant governor of Ohio. She did come out, and she made a speech to the to the Ada County Roundup. Uh, it's a Ada County's uh, Republican Party's largest fundraiser that they have, and we have had it at my ranch, I think, with the exception of a year or two since 1994. And uh, uh, we always get a big crowd. We had a, 250, 300 people last night, and very energetic. Everybody's fired up, and she did a good job. I was going to say, you mentioned the field getting smaller. Uh, Scott Walker's departure, obviously you know him as well, uh, as being a fellow Republican governor, he made a comment during his uh, his his remarks uh, when he was withdrawing or suspending his campaign that he he recommended some other people do that too. Uh, I knew George Pataki quite well twenty years ago, and I think he's referring to some of the candidates who aren't at the moment polling very well, and so the field could winnow very quickly, right? Well, yeah, I, I think, and I think it will. It's going to be a money thing. The, the people that are running out of money, I know. My friend Rick Perry from Texas, uh, he was the first to drop out. Um, that was his second go. You'll recall that four years ago, he was also in the presidential sweepstakes and uh, dropped out after a short period of time. Uh, but, but I think um, all of those that are, you know, if you pick the top four or five bill, uh, which would be uh, Trump, Farina, Carson, uh, none of those are governors. Uh, Kasich is in there around uh, third or fourth place, uh, and then uh, uh, Rubio. And so, you know, the the the, the fortunes are going to shift. And once the early primary states uh, start um, their voting, um, I think you'll see probably an exodus of greater proportions. I know you've been uh, obviously your office follows things that go on around the state quite closely as far as you know, public reaction to various issues. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the, the, the Magic Valley region about refugee resettlement. I actually have a short clip. It's about 15 seconds here from Governor Kasich speaking last night on Sean Hannity's program. Uh, I want, if you could take a listen with me. Sure. And then maybe we can, we can comment about that. If we can't be assured by people like Clapper that we don't have the process to properly screen, well, then we can't do it. So the, the issue is they got to present a program to us that says, yes, we can determine who these people are. So that's uh, that's Governor Kasich last night. And, and I, I read into that that perhaps he's saying we should at least for the time being suspend or put the program on hold. Do you, do you, did you Is that your reaction to his remarks? I, I couldn't agree more, Bill. Uh, John hit the nail right on the head. 
you know, we're we're a we're a very grateful nation for the things that we have and the system that we've got. And one of the one of the main and primary functions of our national government is um, is our safety. And uh, if we are inviting folks without totally vetting them, uh, you know, it's it's very easy. I, I would think it'd be very easy for a terrorist to slip in, or a group of terrorists, and and establish cells around the United States. And so, um, I, I think. Uh, uh, that that uh, John is is right on. You know, we we've been bringing in about a thousand refugees a year into Idaho, about three hundred uh, into the Magic Valley area, and about seven hundred into the Treasure Valley area. And for the most part, they've assimilated. And they've become you know uh, good, productive people. Uh, but we also ha- have our own people here to take care of, and. Um, we have uh, we have already stretched our resources. Uh, fortunately, the churches and other organizations are stepping up and helping out. But these folks qualify to be on uh, the, the be the recipients uh, of uh, our welfare system or part of our welfare system for eight months. And so, I, number one, they need to be vetted. Number two, we need to we need to know that. Uh, the federal government is going to step up and help us t- take care of these folks. Would you be willing, I mean, or, or could you have the power, and if you did, would you be willing to try and at least convince people to suspend the program in the Magic Valley following this next wave, at least until we get this straightened out? Well, I, 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 John hit the nail on the head once again, Bill, and that is if we had the infrastructure, and it seems to me that our that our immigration resources have been stretched uh, very, very thin. And so uh, under Obama's executive order, he's increasing that number substantially. And that number that is coming from uh, countries that have actually encouraged terrorism, uh, I think uh, we need to know that we've got the infrastructure in place to vet these folks and assure uh, the folks in in Twin Falls and Magic Valley assure assure the folks all over the United States uh, that we actually have the programs in place and the infrastructure in place to do the vetting that needs to be done to keep our country safe. I was uh, I was going to uh, mention uh, we've got about three minutes left. I know that last time you were here, I, I we, we got so close to the end, I didn't get an opportunity until the very end to say, is there anything that you've got that's really important? I I, I know reading the other day you had some comments about sage grouse and the like, but. Anything that you'd like to pass along to people today as well? Well, yes, I, I think, you know, uh, it, it, the uh, decision by the Department of Interior and U.S. Fish and Wildlife on sage grouse, um, the good news and bad news. The good news is, uh, and they seem to be at, at odds with each other. If it doesn't warrant being listed uh, because it appears to be, to be growing into sustainable populations and sustainable habitat because of the plans that Idaho and Nevada and Utah, Colorado, all of the 11 western, all the rest of the 11 western states have done. Uh, the bird seems to be recovering. Why then are we going to mess with something that's already working? And so uh, the, the non-listing is warranted. Uh, or the, uh, not listing the bird is the right move. But now they brought in a whole bunch of rules and regulations uh, within the 11 western states uh, that are going to curtail a lot of our economic activity on the public lands. Our number one issue in the Idaho plan is the number one take, and it's ad- been admitted to by the agencies themselves that it's wildfire and then uh, the resulting uh, increasing of uh, invasive weeds like cheatgrass, which is easily uh, uh, ignited fuel. And so uh, we're going to continue that uh, plan in Idaho because we don't like to see Idaho burn up uh, like we've done. But it's some of the practices when they say, okay, you're going to be limited on how much you can graze. Well, it's those cows that, that remove the fuel that burn up the leks and reduce the population of the sage grouse. The lex is the nesting and and uh, mating area. And so uh, it seems counterproductive to me what they're doing, and uh, I'm not going to let it stand without a challenge. 
Well, Governor, we want to thank you as always for joining us. It's, a, it's wonderful to have you on the program. I know you've got a busy schedule. I look forward to chatting with you again soon. All right. Thanks, Bill. Take care, sir. Governor C.L. Butch Otter joining us this morning on Top Story. As I say, he's got a busy schedule. He's got a lot of radio stations to talk to this morning. We've got half an hour left of our program as well. Perhaps some of your telephone calls, too, and your reaction. 51 right now. 